What is chronic kidney disease? What does that mean to have that diagnosis? How will it impact you? What can you do to make things better? Stay tuned, let's talk about it. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, click that like button, hit that bell so you never miss a new recipe or a new health tip. My name is Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor and I'm also the cooking doc. I work as a nephrologist in Greenville, South Carolina for a group called Carolina Nephrology. And everything we talk about here today is just information. This is not medical advice. So having a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease is very scary. It sounds scary. Chronic kidney disease, especially when they put a stage by it, stage three, stage four, or even stage five. It's enough to make you frightened if you don't know exactly what you're dealing with and what it means for your body and for your future. Today, we're not gonna talk any food, but we're gonna talk a lot about what chronic kidney disease means. And I'm gonna teach you a lot of the things that I teach my patients when I see them in the office and I give them a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. If you have other questions about chronic kidney disease that you think of while we're talking here, make sure you write them in the comments and I'll try to answer them on future videos. So first let's talk about in general what chronic kidney disease means if you have that diagnosis. So the big picture kind of simplistic version is that chronic kidney disease means that your kidneys are not able to do their job at a perfect level. So when you're born, you have two kidneys, each with about 1 million filters. And as you get older, you lose a lot of those filters. And you can also run into other problems on the way that cause kidney damage. And when you get kidney damage to a point where the kidneys are not able to filter perfectly and do their job perfectly, you can get a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. Now the official diagnosis of chronic kidney disease is the presence of kidney damage that lasts for three or more months. So that is where the term chronic comes from, three or more months. There's a whole different kidney problem called acute kidney injury. And that's when your kidneys go from one level and get worse really quickly over the course of days. And that's very different from chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease is something that has been going on for three or more months. Now I have lots of other videos on this channel about the causes of chronic kidney disease and what some of the lab measurements mean. And I'll try to put those links up as we go through and also put them in the bottom where the text is so you can click on those and watch and learn more about kidneys if you're not getting the answer that you need through these videos. So the chronic part comes from having the damage for three or more months. The kidney disease part or the kidney damage part comes from something called your GFR or your estimated GFR. And that is in your blood work. So when you go to the doctor, they check your blood and they look at something called your creatinine. And I have a whole video about creatinine and what that means. And so I encourage you to watch it if you wanna learn more. But essentially creatinine is a marker for how well your kidneys are doing. That creatinine then gets put into an equation and you come out with something called a glomerular filtration rate or an EGFR, an estimated glomerular filtration rate. And essentially that's an estimate of your kidney function. And when that level gets down below 60, you fall into the range of what we call chronic kidney disease. And it's chronic kidney disease if it level stays below 60 for three or more months. Now, a lot of people get that diagnosis of chronic kidney disease when they just look at their labs and it says chronic kidney disease, or they look at their summary and it says chronic kidney disease. And they say, wait, my doctor never told me I had chronic kidney disease. Well, that's very, very common. A lot of people find out they have chronic kidney disease either when they're first sent to a specialist like me, or when they look at their blood work on their own and see that things are abnormal. Now, a lot of that's changing as we get the word out about the importance of early intervention to help protect the kidneys. But if that's happened to you, know that you are not alone. So there are a total of five stages of kidney disease, stages one through five. Most of the time when people come to see me, they have stage three, either stage 3A or stage 3B kidney disease. And one of the things that I often get asked is, well, nobody ever told me about stage one or two. Why didn't I learn about it at that time? And that's a great question. And the answer is that stage one and stage two kidney disease don't always have clinical meaning. Stage one and two chronic kidney disease are diagnosed based on something called your GFR that we just talked about. 
but that GFR can be in the range of stage 1 or 2 kidney disease, even if you have normal kidney function. Is that confusing? Definitely. If it were up to me, kidney disease would most of the time start at stage 3 when it's being diagnosed by GFR. So stage 3 is the first level where people really pay attention. And that's really the level where it becomes clear that your kidneys are not working properly. Because again, stage 2 and stage 1, you can actually have pretty normal kidneys, even though your blood work may tell you that things are a little bit abnormal. But I don't want to go more into the details in that. That's a conversation that you need to have with your doctor. But from my standpoint, we need to really start paying attention at stage 3 chronic kidney disease. So please don't get mad at your doctor if they never told you that you had stage 1 or 2 chronic kidney disease. In a lot of cases, it's essentially meaningless. Stage 3, from a nephrologist's point of view, is the part where we need to start paying attention. Another question I get is, does a definition of chronic kidney disease mean I'm going to need dialysis? The answer is absolutely not. The majority of people with chronic kidney disease do not go on to require dialysis. Now, there are some that do, of course, but the earlier we know about your kidney disease, especially if it's at the stage 3A, the more we can do to prevent your kidneys from getting worse and hopefully do what we can to keep you from needing dialysis in the future. But again, a definition of chronic kidney disease does not mean you will necessarily need dialysis. And in fact, most people with chronic kidney disease never need dialysis. So you've got that diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. And if you're like a lot of my patients, you want to know what can be done to prevent it from getting worse. Well, the good news is that there are a lot of things. The first is making sure that your doctor has you on the right medicines. So there are certain medicines that may be good for you. I'm just going to throw out some names here. This is not medical advice, but some of the things or some of the categories that may help are things like ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, mineral or corticoid antagonists, SGLT2 inhibitors. Now that may sound like gibberish, but you may ask your doctor if any of those drugs are right for you. Of course, there are a lot of things you can do besides medicines to help your kidneys and prevent you from needing dialysis. You can make sure that you are eating a healthy diet. Now, if you peruse my website and this YouTube channel, you can see that I have lots of information about the right foods to eat to help protect your kidneys. I even wrote a book about it. The Cooking Docs Kidney Healthy Cooking, a modern 10-step guide to preventing and managing kidney disease. And you can find that on my website, thecookingdoc.co, or on Amazon if you want the paperback copy. So there are things that you can do with your diet to really help protect your kidneys over the course of many years. Other things that you can do that are important are making sure you take care of your overall health. So making sure that if you have diabetes, you take your medicines for diabetes, you eat right for diabetes, and you keep your A1C at a good level. If you're overweight, make sure you're putting into strategies whatever you can to help maintain your weight where it is, or perhaps even lose weight to help protect your kidneys in the long run. So there are definitely things that you can do to protect your kidneys, and it's really important that you are educated about all that stuff. So talk to your doctor or look around and see what you can find. Now, don't fall for things like supplements that say they can improve your GFR or take you from stage 4 to 3 kidney disease or those kidney cleanses that you can buy at the store or on Amazon. All those things are nonsense. Don't fall for the quick fixes. Protecting your kidneys is just like protecting the rest of your body. It's about diet. It's about exercise. It's about taking your medicines. It's about sleeping. It's about not smoking. It's about not drinking too much alcohol. It's about stress management. All those things that are good for everything else in your life also are good for your kidneys. The last thing I want to cover today is people who have kidney disease often wonder if that means that their kids or their grandkids will have kidney disease. The answer to this one is a little more complicated. There are certain types of kidney disease that are absolutely hereditary. Things like autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease are hereditary. So people who have that may pass that on to their kids. There are other types of kidney disease that may have a genetic predisposition for your kids or your grandkids, but don't necessarily mean that they're going to develop kidney disease. And we are really just on the cusp of learning a lot more about genetics and how they impact people as they go through their life and as it keeps them at risk and whether or not those genes actually put them at risk for kidney disease. 
and there may even be gene therapy in the future where we can intervene on those abnormal genes and lower the risk of developing kidney disease. And the thing that I always tell people is that your genetics are not necessarily your destiny. If you do all these other things that we're talking about to help protect your kidneys, sometimes you can overcome your genetic predisposition to kidney disease. So all you kidney warriors out there, keep fighting. And then there are a lot of causes of chronic kidney disease that just don't get passed on from parent to child. So the majority really don't get passed on that way. There are just a few that put your kids at a genetic risk of developing kidney disease and your doctor will be able to talk to you and tell you which category you fall into. So thanks so much for watching today. We talked a little bit about chronic kidney disease, some of the things that I talk to my patients about and some of the most important things that I think we need to cover. I know there are a lot of other things out there and probably a lot of other questions that you have. If you write them in the comments or reach out to me over Instagram or message me on my email, then I'll be happy to see if there are ways that I can answer your questions in following videos. But remember, this is not medical advice. This is just information. And the more you know, the better you can do. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you get alerted when I have a new recipe or new health tip coming up. Make sure you go over to my website, thecookingdoc.co. I've got lots of healthy recipes over there and lots of information about kidney disease. And I will see you next time.